People are always saying how rough and tough the Arabs are, but I've found ways to love them. Welcome to the second episode of my Umrah Reflection series. Okay, so I started to reflect and, you know, really think about why Allah chose the Arabs to protect um, the Kaaba and the two masjids and all of these, you know, places that are so special to the Muslims. Why the Arabs, right? So as I was, you know, reflecting on that and, and really observing what was going on um, in Masjid al-Haram and, you know, especially in the area around the Kaaba, you know, I saw, of course, the guards shouting and being rough and doing all these things. But then it kind of hit me, you know, they have to be that way. OK, so here it comes the first reason why you should actually love the Arabs is because they are actually making it safe for people, um, you know, to make tawaf, to, you know, go in and out of the masjid and making sure that the, the flow of human traffic is going accordingly. Because, you know, there were tons of people that would just like stop in random places, places where there were so many people that could have stepped on them, trampled on them. And, you know, they were endangering not only themselves, but other people. What if the other people tripped and, um, you know, hurt themselves? So, I, I, I mean, I was talking to my friend who was on Umrah with me and we were saying, you know, if it was a mild mannered um, Thai or mild mannered um, Malaysian, what would have happened? You know, you can't just say, excuse me, excuse me. Can you please move out of the way? Excuse me. You're in the wrong place. They're not going to listen. I saw this woman that was, you know, offering a sunnah prayer, I suppose, just in the wrong place, though, it, right in the middle of traffic. And the male guard was just yelling at her to get out of the way. On the surface, you're like, what the heck is wrong with this guy? But then you realize she's endangering herself. She's endangering other people. So he needs to remove her from that spot and she's like despite being like yelled at so much and so loud she is like ignoring him she was the master ignorer if that's a word so you know they have to be that way and, and it ended up you know he had to actually physically remove her maybe they you know maybe she assumed that because she's a woman he wouldn't touch her and all that but when there's a reason um it is permissible to touch the opposite gender when there is a good reason. So the reason here was for public safety. And I was like, wow, yeah, if it wasn't like this, if the Arabs weren't like this and they weren't behaving like this, no one would move, you know, no one would even listen. They're not even listening and they're already like that. They're not even listening. Right. So I was thinking, yeah, they have to be like that. They have to be like that. Otherwise, things won't get done. So that's number one. And then the other thing I saw was the biggest and the tallest and the loudest guards were around the Kaaba. And I was thinking, you know, why is that? So I was looking and I was looking and what I realized was that there were so many people who were doing things in front of the Kaaba or on the Kaaba or towards the Kaaba um, that were actually innovations. They weren't things that are actually in the religion. And so these biggest guards, loudest guards, were actually protecting the purity of the religion. You know, can you imagine? You see these people in front of you and they're already doing whatever they're doing. But, I mean, these guards, if you don't know, they're actually, you know, they're well-learned. They're actually educated um, in the religion. So they know what is right and what is wrong. And I see them and they're like the most brutal with these people. But the reason for that is because they're protecting the purity of the religion. So that was another thing that I became very grateful for the Arabs for. You know, these guys were just like plucking people here and there. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Stop doing that, you know. But it was for a good reason. The purity of the religion. The, re the religion needs to be preserved. Yes. Again, they have to be like that. So yeah, just, you know, being a part of the tawaf and just observing what was going on made me appreciate the, the way that the Arabs are so much. They have to be rough. They have to be loud. They have to do those things. They have to be a little bit pushy. Otherwise, you know, things are going to get messed up. 
you know, people are going to be endangered. Um, the religion is going to be diluted and, you know, all this innovation is going to come in. Okay, so those are the first two reasons why um, I learned to love the Arabs. Um, now, the third and the final one is that I found out that even though the Arabs are like that on the surface, they're rough and tough on the surface, once you get to know them, they're actually really kind and cuddly, <laughs> kind of. Um, and I actually have two incidents that happened to me that led me to this conclusion. Um, at the Masjid al-Haram, at all the doors, there are guards. So these guards, um, they are there basically to check your bags, make sure that you're not bringing in anything untoward, um, you're not bringing in any selfie sticks, um, and you know, just, just making sure that everything's okay. So the lady guards, you know, they're usually just very brief. They're just like, show me bag, show me bag, show me bag, that kind of thing. Um, but there was one time when I had to go and I was alone. I remember I was wearing um, my maroon colored juba set. So I kind of stuck out and, um, and that day I was a little bit lost. So, you know, I asked some questions to one of the guards and I remember her so clearly. Her name's Sister Saba and um, she is of Indian descent, but born and raised in Saudi Arabia. And, um, and I, I, like I said, I remember her so clearly because she was so nice. She was so nice. I mean, just stopping to say assalamu alaikum, smile, ask a sincere question, the demeanor completely changed, you know? She turned to me fully and answered my question, apologized for having to check so many things, check the bag, check the this, that, you know, chatted with me, tried to get me to wear niqab. <laughs> She's like, your face is too cute. Put on a niqab. So yeah, and I actually went back to say hello to her again the same day asked if I could take a picture with her, but it turns out that um, all the guards, they're not allowed to take pictures with um, the pilgrims. So I don't have a picture with her, but she's forever etched in my mind. I was like, how can anyone say that they're not nice? This woman is so nice. Maybe it's just because you don't stop to talk to them, you know? And every time I went back to the masjid, I would always go to that gate hoping that I'd see her again, but I didn't. But I always, I'm always going to remember her because of how cute and kind and, and warm she was, you know. By the end of our conversation, after I had asked my question, she was making dua after dua for me. She kept saying, I love you so much. I love you so much for the sake of Allah. I love you so much because you're my sister. I love you so much. Dua, 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 dua. It was beautiful, you know. So I think that if maybe we just stop and talk to them a little bit, I think they're quite kind and cuddly underneath. So that was the first incident. Yeah, so the second incident actually happened in Medina. And so there was a night where we had to go and get a wheelchair. And all the Wakaf wheelchairs are kept in like this garage kind of sectioned off area. So um, you have to go and register your passport and everything. And I remember the guy that was um, supposed to be stationed there. He wasn't there at first, so we had to wait about 15 to 20 minutes. And of course, once he came, he was the very silent, brooding type. Um, he was a dark-skinned Arab, seemed very intimidating. And even when he went and sat in his little booth uh, and we were waiting to get the wheelchair, he was still like not responding or anything, right? So anyway, after we registered and we got the wheelchair and came out, um, we were kind of waiting to join the rest of the group, if I remember correctly. And, you know, I was just being myself, goofing off and everything and laughing. And I remember there was one time, then I think he came out and he was getting wheelchairs for other people. And um, they, the, the other people had just left and I was laughing really loud. <laughs> I was just laughing really loud and smiling really loud. And he, he let down his guard for just a moment. He looked at me. And he smiled this huge smile. And if you know, um, when dark skinned people smile, it's like their smile is like ting ting, right? It's like so bright, you know? Um, so I saw that smile from far and I was like, eh, this guy is smiling. What happened? <laughs> you know, and I realized that he just thought that I was so silly and, uh, you know, and decided that he wanted to smile <laughs> and laugh at me, which is great, you know, because it was a moment when I saw. 
um, this rather stern person let down their guard and I was like, okay, maybe it's just the same thing, you know, they have to be that way because um, of certain experiences or, you know, certain things that made them that way and they have to be that way. But, but look, when they let down their guard, they're cute and cuddly, <laughs> you know, it was confirmed. So I've decided that, yeah, even though the Arabs, they have to be rough and tough for public safety and also for protection of the religion, Deep down underneath, they're actually soft and cuddly. That's what I've kind of decided. Yeah, so I hope that after you've listened to this video, you'll have a kind of a different opinion of the Arabs. So when you get to go to Umrah again, or you get to go to Umrah for the first time, when you see the, how rough and tough the Arabs are, you'll maybe remember that, mm, yeah, they just have to be that way. And maybe underneath there, there's a cute and cuddly person, right? Okay, so thank you so much for joining me for this second Reflections um, video. The next video, I'm going to share with you some of the hidden gems that you could experience while on Umrah. They're not particularly, they're not particularly um, religious gems and or attractions, but I think that these things will make your Umrah a lot more fulfilling and fun. Okay, so I'll see you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum. Bye-bye.